Imagine a car careening around a city. If the driver lost control, the damage could be immense. That's what happens in cancer. A cell picks up a mutation, a driver, that causes it to grow uncontrollably, and the damage to our body can be devastating, and even fatal. But not all mutations cause cancer. The type of mutation the cell picks up, whether it's a driver or a passenger mutation, determines whether the cell develops normally or turns cancerous. In brain cancer, primary tumours are treated with surgery, followed by a combination of chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Most patients survive the initial tumour, but the disease may reappear, which is called a recurrent tumour, and or may spread to another part of the body, a metastatic tumour. Secondary tumours are much more resistant, and patients with these tumours often die. Recent advances in genomic science have shown that many types of recurrent metastatic tumours are so different from the primary tumour, they're effectively a completely different disease. So it's not surprising that treatments designed to combat the primary tumour fail to treat the recurrent disease. Most studies have been designed around fighting the primary tumour, in part because primary tumours are much easier to remove from patients. Subjecting a patient to surgery to obtain recurrent or metastatic tumours when the patient outlook is bleak is hard to justify. But to improve patient survival, we need to study the secondary tumours that occur after chemo and radiotherapy. Professor Brandon Wainwright's group at the University of Queensland's Institute for Molecular Bioscience, IMB, discovered the first gene known to cause any brain cancer. They have since focused their attention on a type of brain tumour common in children known as medulloblastoma. It occurs in the cerebellum, a small section at the rear of the brain responsible for our balance and coordination. But how does a brain tumour such as medulloblastoma develop in the first place? The driver. Every cell in our body contains an entire copy of our body's DNA. This DNA is constantly changing and mutating as cells grow and develop and are exposed to influences in our environment. But not all DNA changes are created equal. Some of these are what researchers call driver mutations. They drive cancerous change. And some are passenger mutations, or mutations that don't actually affect the cell. To stop the car, you need to target the driver while leaving the passengers alone. The Wainwright group is studying tumour cells to work out the genetic changes that are drivers of cancer. They're then asking, are there any drugs that target these drivers? Developing a new drug from scratch is a process that takes an average of 15 years, costs over a billion US dollars and could fail at any point along the way. Repurposing an existing drug is much faster, meaning it can be used as a treatment for patients sooner. The Wainwright group have identified a driver in medulloblastoma that can be treated by an existing class of drug. They test the drug by removing the tumour and grafting it onto the brain of a mouse. There, it grows identically to the tumour in the child. The researchers treat the tumour using existing methods. If it returns and spreads or resists treatment, they use the existing drug that looks promising. In this way, they're testing existing drugs on real tumours that have recurred or spread without having to subject young patients to unnecessary surgery. By attacking this driver and stopping the cancerous mutations, they are coming closer to understanding and hopefully beating cancer.